Привет всем с понедельником. Поздравляю вас с понедельником. Um, good to see everybody. Looks like we've got a lot of people who, a lot of Russians here. Everybody, all of you Russians, tell me where you're from. What city are you in? I'm very interested to know. So write in the comments what city you are currently in, because I know a lot of you, I think, are Russian. Um, so this will be fun, talking about Russian rock. So real quick, um, this is, so I first heard this music back in 2004. I had a, oh good, we've got Kazan, Chelyabinsk. Um, I know. <laughs> Somebody's from Tatarstan, I guess. Oh, no, he's in the Kazan. Okay, yeah, so the, the Chuk Chuk. Um, so, yeah, so what's funny is, hello, everyone. What's funny is I, so as I told you, I, this is when I started learning Russian, it was back before the internet, back before YouTube. And so I only had music that I could find from like Ruskaya Radio. And so heat, um, what was it called? Heat parade or something like, so I was listening to really kind of mm, silly, like uh, pop music. And so then I had a boyfriend, a Ukrainian boyfriend, and he heard me listening to like, I don't know, I think it was like Katya Lel or something. And he was like, oh, I've got to help you. This music is, this is so bad. You got to listen to some good music. Hello, welcome to everybody. So he introduced me to the Brat Dva soundtrack, and I will be forever grateful because yes, this is it, this is I think one of the best soundtracks ever. American movies, Russian movies, the soundtrack is awesome. So we're gonna talk today about the number one track. I think this is an awesome number one track, and it's called Pakovniko uh, Nikto Nipishet. We're gonna talk a little bit about the name of the song, where it comes from, and then the movie as well. And then we'll start talking about the, the city. So while, since I have a lot of Russians here today, скажите русские, какая песня на этом саундтреке вам больше всех нравится? Мне интересно, знаете ли вы этот саундтрек? Если да, то есть какая песня вам нравится? Пишите, пожалуйста, в комментариях. Мне интересно, какую песню здесь вы любите. Uh, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the name of the song. Полковнику никто не пишет. So this is actually based on some novels by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. He's most famous for A Hundred Years of Solitude. That's the book that I've read of, um, of Gabriel Marquez. But I guess the two, these, the two band members from B2, they really loved Gabriel, uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And so it was inspired by kind of some of the imagery and symbolism from the book. Vyechna Maladoy, yes, that's a good one from the soundtrack. Uh, I love, I love that song as well. Eventually, I would love to cover more songs from the soundtrack as well. Okay, so um, we've got, so this is, this is how you say it in Russian, Pokovniko Nikto Nipishet, or in English, nobody writes to the colonel. Keep that in mind. We're going to come back to it. And then obviously in Spanish, that's how you would say that in Spanish. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Michael Thorne says Marquez was very popular in the Soviet Union. Yes. Tulula, tulula, tu, 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 la, la. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, anyway, for you people who are learning Russian, learn this soundtrack. Every song on it is so good. Now, there's a couple of Ukrainian songs that's going to confuse you. That confused me because there were a couple of songs I was like, Hmm, I don't understand anything. What's happening? <laughs> and then I realized later that they were Ukrainian songs. So there's two Ukrainian songs on there. Um, okay, so a lot of the imagery in this song comes from these books by Marquez. And if you've read those books, tell me like, you know, what it's referencing to in the book, because in some ways this song doesn't mean very, like I don't understand what this song means because I don't I haven't read this book so um 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the, this is the soundtrack for the Brat 2 movie. There was a movie called Brat, which was about the war in Chechnya. And then the second one, Brat 2, Daniel, the main character, uh, they, he and his brother go to the U.S. And it's really interesting to see the U.S. through the eyes of a Russian. And at this moment in history, by the way, this is done by a very famous director called Alexei Balabanov. And what's happening is Daniel is trying to show like America doesn't have all the answer answers. It's not a great. You know, and so it's a very interesting moment in Russian international relations because Daniel sort of represents the essential Russian and that you know, a true Russian shouldn't think that like America is better than Russia kind of thing. Anyway, so you can watch the movie. It's very interesting. It's interesting to watch Brat and then go and watch Brat 2. And Brat 2 is just, there's so many lines from it that are very famous. No, I haven't, I haven't seen, these are the only two Balabanov movies I've seen, I think. I'd have to look at a list of his movies. But yeah, these are the only ones I've seen. Um, and then, so then here's the list of people and a lot, you're going to see a lot of really famous rock groups. So you've got Agatha Christie, Zimfira, Spleen. I think I'll probably do a Spleen song eventually because he's really great. Um, let's see, I can't see my slide very well. One second. Let's see. Okay. Akin Elzi, that's the Ukrainian song. They're one of the most popular bands in Ukraine. Probably the most popular band in Ukraine. Um, yeah, so there's so many songs on here that I love so much. Tulula is so good. Um, let's see what else. Vishna Maladoy. They're all great. Anyway, okay, so let's go ahead and get started on the text. Like I said, if you haven't seen this movie, watch it, and then you got to listen to the soundtrack in order. Like, so if you can find the whole album, because in between each of the tracks, there's a little... Um, line from the movie. So like, for example, right before this song starts, um, the, the album starts off with like, are you all gangsters? No, we are Russians. It's just, you have to listen to the whole album. It's, it's so good. Okay. So how do I stop sharing? One second. Remove, add the stream and switch. What? Okay. So hopefully I've got some Russian learners today because we're going to talk about some tricky things in Russian grammar. Okay, so let's go through. Remember, so what I want to do before I tell you the exact translation of everything is I want you to identify if these words, garada i paizda, are masculine, feminine, neuter, or plural. Russians don't не подсказывайте. Is garada and поезда, are they masculine, feminine, neuter, or plural? I'll give you one second to think about it. And then I'm going to direct your attention to something that will give you a hint. Okay, so I always tell students, nouns are, they can confuse you. They can, they can change identity a little bit. So always look at the adjective right before them. Oh, Joseph, you fell right into my trap. Joseph, try again. Look at the gender. Look at this, these endings. Those aren't typical feminine endings, are they? So try again, Joseph. See if you can figure it out. Okay, so see how, so if you just look at the noun, you're going to be led astray. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. So, um, so we want to look at the surrounding adjectives. The adjectives in front will really help you know what gender something is. So we've got So here is a plural adjective. So this is actually an irregular masculine plural. These happen a lot in Russian. For example, let me know. Actually, you guys in the comments, if you're Russian, great, help us out. Think of some examples of irregular masculine plurals. There's tons of them in Russian, tons of them in Russian. For example, lisa, galasa. Uh, what else is there? Help me out, people. Lisa, galasa. 
Bratia, that's a really irregular one. Uh, what other irregular plurals? Um, anything else? Uh, there's lots of irregular plurals. Uchitilia. Uh, Namera. See how these are normally they're masculines and now they become, they get kind of almost a feminine ending in their plural. So Russian, just like English has, I would say Russian has more irregular plurals than English. Okay, here we go. So let's go word for word on this. And here we go. This is a great one. You should know this at the beginning levels of Russian. So big cities. Большие города, пустые поезда, не берега, не дна. Все начинать сначала. Here we go. Большие города. Big cities. Empty. What would this one be? Poised. What's a poised? Okay, so empty trains. Okay, this is fun. You start thinking, how would you translate ni, 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 ni? I'm going to go neither and nor. Sounds very fancy in English, but that's how you say it. So neither the, oh, I never know how to translate this. Like the coast, maybe? Nor the... What's that called when it's the bottom of the river? Like n neither the river bank or the uh, the no. How would you say that? <laughs> uh, the you know the bottom of the river, like or the bottom of the ocean. So the the bottom. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't sound good in English, but we'll translate it later. Later. Um, yeah. So shore. You could do shore. That's a good one. Let's do shore, and then we can do like the bottom of the river, riverbed. Yeah, there you go, Joseph. I couldn't think of that word, the riverbed. Okay, so nachi nat snachala. So everything. Oh, I'm making a mess here. I need to write smaller. Okay, I gotta write smaller. Start from. Beginning. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna go for the original of everything. All right, let's see. Okay, what's the original of Balshiye? Balshiye, think of the famous theater in Moscow where they do ballet. Balshoy. And the singular of this was Gorod. Okay, pustoy and poised. And then this is, the original of this was berik. But guess what? This is an irregular plural too. Biriga. And the original of this one was dno, dno, which is a neuter. Okay, no change there. This is already in the infinitive, see, because of the tem yakiznak. And then the original of this was nachalo. Okay, so grammar time. Here we go. So we got a, a nominative on these ones. These are in the nominative because you're just saying big cities. You're not doing anything to the big cities. They just are. Big cities, same thing here, nominative. And then we're getting genitive here because we're negating it. So in Russian, a lot of times when you use negation, you negate something, it forces genitive case. There we go. Genitive case. And same thing here. Genitive case. And again, s forces genitive. So we're getting genitive there. Okay. Awesome. Next. Ooh, look at this fun phrase. We're hearing a lot about vaina. We've heard that word a lot this year. 
what kind of vaina? See if you guys can, this is a, especially in American and Russian history, this is a great phrase. For those of you learning um, Russian, how would you translate that? Chalodnaya vaina. Chalodnaya vaina. A lot of people here probably didn't even live during then, during this time. Translate chalodnaya vaina for me. So I'm going to read while I'm hoping somebody will translate. Chalodnaya vaina. И время, как вода, он не сошел с ума, ты ничего не знала. Okay, хорошо. Вот. So here we go. What is, thank you, спасибо, the Cold War. Холодная война. Cold War. Bams. И время. And time. Like water, he didn't mm, go, this is not going to make any sense when I do it literally, from his <laughs> intellect. <laughs> that phrase doesn't make any sense, literally. Okay, you... Nothing didn't no. Okay, and pay attention. We're going to have fun with this phrase a little bit later. We're going to do a grammar exercise. We're going to do a grammar exercise, okay? So here we go. Oh, yeah. Zapitia. Sorry, I copied this from the internet. Just copy and paste, copy and paste. Uh, okay, so холодная война и время как вода он не сошел с ума, ты ничего не знала. Okay, here we go. So let's go over the originals of everything. Vaina is a feminine, right? Which explains why we're getting this adjective ending. The Cold War. И время как вода. Okay, people, I'm going to hurt your brains. What gender... Ruski, я знаю, что вы уже знаете. Но for people who are learning Russian, this is going to hurt your brain. What gender is this? It's going to hurt. There's a whole bunch of these type of nouns. Пламя. Еще какие? Имя. Время. Еще какое? Вымя. An utter. What else? Знамя. I can't remember anymore. Good. I can't stand the quiet. Молодец. And, vre and so время, even though it looks like a feminine, is actually a neuter. And there's a whole bunch of new nouns like this. Plamia, imia, vlimia, znamia. Can't think of more. There's there's more of them. Bremia, uh, like a burden. Right? That are actually neuters. They are actually neuters, okay? And they they decline really weird in the cases. Нет времени до этих времён. They're very weird, okay? So время как вода. Nothing really is happening here. Он не сошел с ума. Okay, so this comes from the verb сойти. Saiti, and this is a prefixed verb of motion. So when you put s onto iti, meaning to go, it means to come down from something, to come down from something. But when we put this phrase together, it actually means to go crazy. To go crazy. So to come down from your intellect, meaning to go crazy. And stay tuned, at the end of this, we're going to do exercises about talking about words to um, say that somebody goes crazy, right? Like slang. And we'll say, well, for us, those of us who speak English, we can do some slang for how, how to say somebody's crazy in slang in English, and then in Russian as well. Okay, so uh, so right here, the grammar that we're seeing is the he conjugation. And it's past tense. And then we're seeing this, remember, forces genitive. And the original of this was um. OK, 
Okay, so that's why it's getting the ah ending. Ты ничего не знала. This comes from the verb знать. And this is the feminine past tense. So if you're a girl and you want to say, I knew, or I didn't know that. Я этого не знала. You, that's how you say it. If you're a boy, you say it like this. Я знал. Я этого не знал, etc. Okay, so Russian past tense is so easy. It's beautiful compared to English past tense, compared to Spanish past tense. It's the easiest thing about the Russian language. Oh, and other things I've told you I think are easy. There's no the or a uh in Russian. Okay, good. So this is the grammar there was pretty simple. What I don't know, and maybe those of you who have read Marquez can tell me is why is he suddenly talking to a girl here? He's talking to a girl. He's saying ti, and then he's using feminine past tense. So who is he saying? What girl is he talking to? Ti ничего не знала. Ti не знала, что он сошел с ума. I don't understand that. This song, to me, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Okay, хорошо. Okay, guys, I'm going to tell you a story. This song, these two lines right here, was the exact moment when I understood that Russian has padiji cases, okay? So I asked my, my boyfriend at the time, Pasha, I was like, why is right here, it's pakovniku, and now right here, it's pakovnika? And of course, no offense to the natives, but sometimes natives don't know why they say things the way they do. I know I feel that way about English. I don't know why I say things the way I do. Uh, and so he's like, I don't know, because the one is riding and the other one's waiting. <laughs> like, that doesn't help me at all, right? That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. It's just the one is riding and the other one's waiting. He did not explain it. And same thing now. When I ask my husband questions about Portuguese, his answer is always, I don't know. That's just how you say it. That's just that's just how you say it, right? He can't explain why. So I'll explain this to you. Why is it right here, Palkovniku? And right here, it's Polkovnika. Okay, so here we go. Let's translate these words literally. Polkovnik is a colonel. Look at this awful spelling in English. What? W-T-F, right? Call it colonel. Where is this R coming from? I have no idea. English is the worst language to read in the whole world. I absolutely believe it. it's the worst language to read. So colonel, no one doesn't notice in Russian you doubled negate. You can double, triple negate. Doesn't right. Colonel. So even though these two words are different, Palkovniku, Palkovnika, they both mean the colonel. Uh, no one doesn't wait. Okay. So here we go. Let's look at the grammar. The original of this was Polkovnik. Polkovnik, just like this. Polkovnik. And right here, we're getting dative case. Dative case is the case you get when you go for someone or to someone. Okay, so for example, nobody writes to the colonel. And that's why we get dative. Nobody writes to the colonel. Um, okay, nikto nie, no changes there. But again, notice in Russian, you double negate. You can't double negate in English. You say uh, nobody writes to the colonel. You can't have two negatives in an English sentence. It is first. Good. Michael's explaining the the grammar to us. Okay, so so now we're going to come down. What's the original of pishit? Pishit. This is that tricky. Russian verb, pisat. Make sure you stress that syllable because if you don't, you're going to say a different word. Okay, so pisat. And this is the he conjugation. This is the he conjugation. So ya pishu, ti pishish, on pishit, my pishim, vi pishit, etc. Here we go. Next one, palkovnika. Okay, now we're getting. Genitive case. Why? 
because you're waiting for the kernel. When you wait for somebody, you're going to get genitive case. And genitive, uh, so it's technically, yeah. So, so the uh, important thing to remember in Russian is that there are just, I didn't make up the rules, don't get mad at me. There are just certain verbs that need certain cases, okay? So for example, verbs that need dative case would include pomagats, to help, to help somebody. Pomagats, polkovniku, you could help the colonel. Ya pomagaju polkovniku. If you want to call somebody, zvanit, kamu, ya zvanyu polkovniku. What else? Dative case. Um, ya dayu polkovniku. I'm giving the colonel something. I'm giving something to the colonel. What else is there? Uh, I can't remember any more data. Okay, so same thing here with ждать. It's just one of those verbs that requires genitive case. Some more examples of verbs that just require genitive case and you just memorize it is бояться. бояться. Um, another one is достигать. See, they just, for some reason, I don't know why, I didn't make up the words, or I didn't make up the rules, they they force genitive case. You don't have a choice. You can't just say bayatsa polkovniku. You can't say that. You have to put it into genitive case. Okay, so this, like I said, this for me was a huge light bulb going off in my head being like, okay, certain things just need certain cases. And you just memorize it. And that's all there is. You don't, there, you don't, it's not open for interpretation. Uh, Speak Russian says double negation. How weird. I know, right? And there can be triple negation. Nikto nichivo ne znayet. Oh my gosh, that hurts my brain. My, that hurts my English brain so bad. Nikto nichivo ne znayet. Somebody translate that triple negation sentence into English. Good luck. Nikto nichivo ne znayet. Kakui ужас? Only ужас. Okay. Хорошо. Next part of the song is... Mm, let's go through and we read it first. На линии огня пустые города. You guys should remember that from the beginning of the song. В которых никогда ты раньше не бывала. Okay. What? Let's go word by word. Um, when you literally translate this this particular phrase into English, you say in the nobody. Nope, you can't do that. Nope, Michael Thorne, you're using too many negatives in your sentence. You can't say nobody knows nothing. Uh -uh. You can only have one negative in your sentence. Try again. Nobody knows nothing. Nikto ничего не знает. Maybe English, yeah, so you, try again. You can only have one negative in your sentence in English. Nobody knows nothing. Nikto ничего не знает. Okay, try again. You people who are learning English, try and translate that sentence again. Okay, here we go. Na lini agnya. In, it's usually on though. I'm just going to let you know. Lini, uh, line, fire. All right, so for you English speakers, start thinking, hmm, how do we say this particular phrase? Here we go again. Empty cities in which never you before not <laughs> slash didn't. Um, Bivala, that's a hard one to translate. Ben, I'm going to say Ben. Ben. Okay, see how ugly that is in English? Okay, let's go through and do the original of all these words. The original of this one is Linia. Linia. It's a feminine. See, if we're needing, if we're, need, if we're using the word in, what case are we going to get? We're getting prepositional. Next, the original of this was agon. 
and it's a masculine originally. This one is a masculine, okay? So we're getting here, the myaki is not going to a ya, and when masculine suddenly turn feminine, it's most likely what case? It is genitive. So we're getting genitive because there's a little invisible of. And remember, there's no word for of in, in Russian. Let's see, Sergei says, Я думаю, сериал бригады несмотря на популярное мнение, все же смотрится на одном дыхании. Ah, yes. By the way, for a lot of people, they don't know about the 90s in Russia. If you can translate Sergei's commentary here, there's a movie called Brigada. That's a, or it's a serial or a TV show, like a series. Um, you can learn about like the crimes that were present in the 90s. It was total chaos. It was a horrible time for uh, safety in Russia. So, okay, so here we go. So in the line of fire, Pustia Garada, empty cities. Remember the original of this is Pustoy, Gorod. Okay, in which, what case are we getting here? If we need, if we have in, it forces what, which case? Katori is the original, and here we have prepositional, because you're in the city. Ti rancha nie buivala. The original of this is buivat, and it's hard to translate into, in, into English. It can mean, like, to happen, or it can mean to be. It has multiple different meanings. So empty cities in which you have never been kind of thing. And again, notice double negation, not possible in English. Nikogda nie buivala. Yep, good. So I noticed Joseph uh, corrected Michael on how to say in English. Remember, in English, you can only have one negative per sentence. So you couldn't say you've never not been in English. You would just say you've never been. Okay, хорошо. That was easy grammar. All right, now this is the last little bit of the song that we're going to talk about, and then we're going to talk about words for going crazy. Here we go. И рвутся поезда, и рвутся поезда на тонкие слова. О не сошел с ума, ты ничего не знала. Here we go. This is a this is a fun word to try and translate. Terror slash rip. And it can, I'll tell you about one more meaning, meaning that it can have as well. Trains on tonkie. Tonkie is a hard word for me to translate. Maybe delicate. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. Tonkie slava. Like delicate words. And this wasn't a masculine to begin with. This was a neuter to begin with. We'll talk about that in a second. He, hopefully you know this phrase now, not went from intellect. <laughs> you, nothing, not new. Okay, here we go. Originals of everything. This is a very weird Verb. I'm going to tell you why here in just a second. The original of this is rvatsa. Rvatsa. Um, so here we have the they conjugation. And I really don't know how I would translate this. Do you say that trains? Ooh, uh, good. I like that. Thin. Thin words. Thin words. Why? Существует ли такая фраза, как тонкие слова, значит, не серьезные, что ли? Я не 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 понимаю. Может быть, есть как какое-то там другое значение этой фразы? Подскажите, пожалуйста, как тонкие слова, что это значит? Мне интересно. Okay, so рваться. So we have the they conjugation here. Real quick, this is going to hurt your brain. What does this sentence mean? Me me ah. Minya rviot. This is so weird. So if this means tear, rip, minya rviot. Try and translate that. Who knows what that would mean? 
or меня порвало, for example, меня порвало. Anybody want to try and translate this? It is not what you think. It is a very weird expression. Меня рвёт. Меня порвало. Anybody want to try? Maybe if you had a heavy night of drinking, you drink too much. Nobody's trying меня рвёт. So again, I'm trying to tell you that this verb рвёт is very strange. It's a very strange verb. It is used in ways you wouldn't expect. Rvat. It literally means to rip uh, or it means to like tear or something. All right, so nobody's tell nobody's guessing what minyarviot means. It means I'm throwing up, to throw up. So when you throw up or you puke in Russian, you're literally saying it's tearing me. It's tearing me. So that means to throw up in Russian, just FYI. So how the trains are not throwing up necessarily, <laughs> um, but they're kind of tearing through the city. That's what I'm imagining. Like that's the imagery I'm imagining is that it's, the trains rip through the city because kind of that loud noise. Um, good, so tears me up. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. That would, you could say that, like it's tearing apart my heart. But if you specifically say minya parvala, like it means like, it can also mean you threw up. So if you're talking to a doctor and you you just want to explain your symptoms, uh, you could say, да, меня рвёт каждый день. I'm throwing up every day. Я худею, I'm losing weight, et cetera, et cetera. Ooh, yeah, gut-wrenching. When you think of it like that, that makes sense, right? Your gut gets wrenched. Your gut gets ripped. Mm, интересно, я об этом никогда не думала. Молодец, спасибо. Um, okay, so thin words. Слова могут иметь тонкое значение, потом две идеи. Okay, uh, we are, have already done this one. He went crazy. And then ты ничего не знала. Again, we know this. This is the feminine past tense of... It's nuts. Super easy. So grammar in the song was super easy. Oh, I didn't, we didn't talk about this one. Tonki is the original. Tonki. And the original of this one is slova, a neuter. Keep in mind that neuters become a or ya on the end when they're plural. Okay? So keep that in mind. A lot of people forget that, that neuters end up looking like that when they're plural. Okay, хорошо. We're going to have fun now. This is where I need help from everybody. Um, about coming up with slang in English or Russian about how to go crazy, right? So let's look at this phrase, to go crazy. If a person has already gone crazy, you're going to use the perfective. Он сошел с ума. Она сошла с ума. Мы уже сошли с ума. This is called the perfective. This is more advanced grammar. Сходит. This is you're in the process of going crazy, like every day. So let's read this sentence. Признаки, что парень сходит с ума от любви к тебе. So what is this boyfriend, Parin, going crazy because of? What's making him go crazy? Um, so while while somebody's going to attempt to translate this sentence, uh, I'll answer их. <laughs> I'll answer их's question. Uh, как я выбираю следующую песню? Я просто думаю о своих любимых песнях. И, ну, песни, которые мне помогали учить русский, и именно таким образом я выбираю. Ну, конечно, я принимаю ваши рекомендации. Самое главное, чтобы я сама понимала песню. И вот почему иногда трудно, например, Высоцкого, ну, разобраться в Высоцком сама, это очень нелегкое дело для меня. Поэтому обычно я беру очень простые песни, потому что... Здесь есть люди, которые сейчас учат русский, как иностранные, и для них разобраться в Высоцком тоже будет трудно. Коста прошел через. Окей, хорошо, я послушаю эту песню. Окей, anybody want to try and translate? Признаки, что парень сходит с ума от любви. So you go crazy from something. You go crazy from something. 
So, признаки, что парень сходит с ума от любви к тебе. Um, два глупых Два веселых гуся. I think there's a version of that that exists too. Два глупых гуся. Да, окей, хорошо. So, signs that your boyfriend is going crazy with love for you. He's going crazy from how much he loves you. So if you want to say you're going crazy something and you want to say what you're going crazy from, add in what and then genitive case. Yeah, signs that he's crazy in love with you. Just like the Beyonce song, right? Crazy in love. Okay, this is a phrase I say all the time because I have four kids. Мои дети сводят меня с ума. So notice this one is to go crazy. What do you think this one is? Мои дети сводят меня с ума. Мои дети сводят меня с ума. Помогите. Помогите. Например, когда я была в Калифорнии, ой, мои дети сводили меня с ума. Это была очень трудная поездка. So how would you translate this phrase? Сводит кого с ума. Сводит меня с Мои дети сводят меня с ума. Good. My kids are driving me crazy. So right here, this is a person going crazy. And here, this is somebody making you crazy. Driving. Notice in English, we use driving. Like they're driving you to crazy town, I guess. Okay. So while I'm, do, uh, while I'm explaining the grammar behind this adjective, I want you guys to come up with more examples of slang, right? So what are some slang in Russian and in English to describe a person who is crazy. I saw somebody wrote up here, somebody went nuts. Uh, that's funny, in English you go nuts, right? What other, what other expressions do you know in Russian or in English about to go out, like somebody who went crazy? I've got some good ones in English in mind that I think will be funny for everybody. Okay, here we go. So let's look at this grammar. This ending, shed she is what's called a past active participle. And you see it in Russian sometimes like prashed she. Past, the thing that is past. Ushed she. Um, having departed, like people who departed this life too soon. How would we say that? So let, let's, um, on spetsil. Uh-huh, I've heard that one before. Uh, I'm trying to think how we would say that uh, in English. Let's think of some fun ones. Uh, one second, let me explain this grammar and then we'll write them out. So here we've seen this phrase, from intellect, right? From intellect. And then this is a fancy grammar term. It's from shol. And then a person who did that. So this is a fancy, fancy grammar. But you put it together and you get the word for crazy, the adjective. Like, so if you want to say, my mom is crazy. Maya mama suma shedsha. She is crazy. And you hear this word in English a lot, or in Russian a lot. Suma shedshed senly. Like crazy prices. That's a, those are crazy prices. But that's literally the dissection of the grammar in that phrase. The, the thing that went crazy. Okay, let's do some slang for going crazy. So we've got крыша поехала крыша еще как он спятил он чолкнулись gone mental go bonkers yeah that's a good one off your rocker let's talk about that one off the rocker means one flew over the cuckoo's nest <laughs> yeah so when a person is like, you can say he's cuckoo, right? Like he's just, he's crazy. He is on another planet. Look at this phrase that Nori wrote, um, off my rocker, off their rocker, especially with old people when they go crazy because they sit on those rocking chairs, right? They sit on those chairs that rock and they fell and now they're off their rocker. They're like, they're crazy. What about, do you guys also know to, what's the one in Russian, kruk? Correct me. I can't, I can't, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Like kruk. Kruksrivalsa or something like that I've heard before. So in English, let's do the ones in English. 
um, to lose your marbles. And if you guys are writing some of these, what does it literally mean? To lose your marbles, right? That's another famous one. He's lost it. Good. Um, uh, a screw is loose. That's a great one. Do you guys remember this one? A screw is loose. Screw is loose is значит что-то не так с этим человеком. Что-то не так. I think a screw, I think he's got a screw loose, right? Because что-то не так в его голове. Он очень плохо um, соображает или что-то так. Somebody went bonkers to, I, there's some other ones that have swear words that I can't say because then I'll get in trouble with YouTube. But um, yeah, let's see uh, any other ones. Hopefully everybody's learning some great new phrases. To be in cloud cuckoo land. Yeah, we have that. That's We have to be in cloud cuckoo land as well. That's like a person who's just like weird. Maybe they're high on something. That's in the belfry. I have never heard that phrase in English. Maybe it's a very old phrase. Um, anyway, okay. So I am. Op that's all for today. I'm very open to suggestions for more songs. I'll look at that one that somebody wrote um also so that's all for today we i'll take these lyrics over to the community tab and you guys can try and translate i really love seeing everybody's opinions on how to translate it also if you have read the book maybe you can say oh the reason he talks about or is because in the book something, something, something. So that would be great to hear your insight as well. But, okay, хорошо, это все на сегодня. I hope that you liked that. And if you haven't listened to the Brat Dva soundtrack, you've got to listen to it right now, right now. Finish this live stream and go listen to it. Have it on in the background while you work. And then tonight, your homework is to watch the movie. Okay, хорошо, это все. Check out the community tab for the the discussion of the translation a little bit later today. Хорошо, это все. Пока-пока, счастливого вам дня или спокойной 